This video has been very, very long in the making. I began my quest for the perfect exhaust in January. It is now June. It is finally done. It is finally sounding the way I want it. It took a lot of trial and error and a bit too much money, but it's finished and I've documented it so that you can learn from it and do it for about half the price probably. And you can build this completely yourself if you want. You can have some of it professionally done like I did uh, because I don't have welding skills to completely assemble this whole thing. Or you can bring the plans to a shop and they'll do it all for you. There is a little bit of maths involved, but it's very straightforward. It's a preset equation. All you need to do is plug numbers in so you don't need any mathematical skill. Um, literally just a calculator and a little bit of patience. Anyway, that's enough blab. I'm gonna get into the initial calculation. It's basic, it's a couple minutes. Um, I'll explain how it works for this car. You can apply it to any car, and then we'll get into actually building it and welding it. So enough chat, let's begin. I'm using a cheap eBay infrared thermometer to check the average exhaust temperature of the car, and then I'm just comparing it with the oil temperature based on the reading my car gave me to cross-reference and check if it was accurate. Okay, so to get this working, first thing we need to do is figure out what RPM we want the drone to cancel out at. Now, I ended up tweaking this at the end, but I'm going to show you the full process so you get the whole picture. To start with, I chose what RPM I'm at at freeway speed in 6 gear, and that is pretty much exactly 2000. Because I figured that's going to be where the drone is most annoying if I'm hearing it for a long time. So we have 2000, because we need to find the sound frequency in Hertz, Hertz is measured in seconds, so we divide by 60 to get revolutions per second, and that's 33. Something. 33.34. Now we've got a six cylinder engine and it's four stroke, which means there's three ignitions per revolution. We do revolution per second times three, which gives us exactly 100 hertz. So at 2000 RPM, freeway speed, the drone's at 100 hertz. Now we need to find what the speed of sound is at the exhaust temperatures. I measured between 130 and 150, so I went with 150 because hotter means longer J-pipe required and that means it's easier to trim it down if we have to, which is what I ended up doing, but I'll show you this first. So jump online, find any speed of sound calculator. They'll give you the option to put in a speed or a temperature and it will give you the other result. So you want to put in the temperature. So I put in 150 degrees. At room temperature 20 degrees, it's 343 meters per second. At 150, it's 412.3. So that makes a massive difference in the calculation of the J-pipe. I'm just jumping in post edit here to mention one thing I forgot. In the next step, we're going to be multiplying our result by 0.25. And that number comes from the fact that we're trying to create a pipe one quarter the length of the drone's sound wave. This means when the drone enters the pipe and comes back into the main exhaust system, it's exactly 50% offset from the sound waves coming straight from the engine, and that means they cancel out. That's what eliminates the drone. To find the required length, we just do one quarter times speed of sound over hertz. So that's one quarter times 412.3 over 100, and that gives us 1.031 meters, or 1,031 millimeters. You may be wondering, does that mean when you cold start the car, it doesn't work? Pretty much. So for the first couple of minutes of driving, the cancellation is pretty shocking because it's a completely different temperature, the car isn't warmed up, but it's kind of good, like everyone likes a loud cold start anyway, so who cares. In terms of diameter of J-pipe, you want it to be a little bit smaller than the actual exhaust itself. So my exhaust system is two and a quarter inch diameter, the J-pipe diameter is two inches. I don't really know what the perfect size is, I know some people go considerably smaller, they might go one and a half inches or so. As far as I know, as long as you stay within a reasonable range, it doesn't make a massive difference. One other really important thing to remember is when you're measuring that length of the J-pipe, because it works its way around, you want to measure the center line of the pipe. You don't want to measure the inside or the outside because it's going to throw off your measurements because the inside and outside radius of a bend is obviously different. So do as best as you can to measure from the middle of the pipe to give you the most accurate measurement. My exhaust comes out as a double, joins into a single, and then comes back out as a double. I have no idea why. If you have enough room, you could put one J-pipe in the middle when it's a single and that will affect both. I didn't because I have a drive shaft in the way, there's no more room, so I had to make two, put them at the back. And to be honest, that probably does a better job at resonating just because you have twice as much, but I don't know. So now it's all worked out, I'm gonna figure out what design I want and then head up the road to get some pipe. No. I'm gonna head up the road to buy some exhaust tubing. Awesome.
Awesome guys, the setup's all done. I was totally expecting to have to cut that, cut that, add some extension pipe, all sorts of stuff, but we have absolutely clutched this one. This 30 degree bend and this 90 degree bend connected directly to each other and the cutoff from the car already is exactly lined up. Look at that. Obviously this is a couple millimeters of play, but we've got flexible exhaust hangers, so that doesn't really matter. That's fine. I cannot believe how lucky that is. I'm doing this on a test piece of pipe from the old system, and I'm pretty much gonna do it the way that I want the actual thing to be set up. I wanna find out how quickly this tape melts. If it's good enough for a few seconds of welding just to tack it together, that's fine. But I just need to test that on this um, practice one first. Amperage 80 to 105. I'm gonna go sort of the 79 side of 80. Bring it down. This is really thin metal, and I think it'll melt holes very quickly if I'm not careful, so that's why I'm doing this test piece. Fire extinguisher for electrical, which this is, and a little shield so people walking down the street don't go blind. All right, so we got the first part welded up. It's gone well. Here's the plan for the J resonator. So basically, you're gonna have it coming up right about here. This is about where the diff is, comes through here. This is out to the tailpipe. So we've got all this room in here, this whole rectangular section where the muffler was that we can work with. We're gonna have a pipe coming from about here up 140 millimeters. That 140 with this on top is enough room for another one of these 180s to be connected directly underneath it and be parallel with that section. So it's gonna be quite a neat package. It's about as compact as possible. With that 140 and these two, the total length of the J resonator will be 1,030 millimeters, which is within a millimeter of the length I calculated for 150 degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna drill a hole here for the start of this and we'll try tacking it all up. started on the left side and I absolutely butchered the hole for the resonator as you can see by how uneven that is so I've cut out with some spare tube another piece which is a lot cleaner way nicer and it'll just sub in like that so that should work getting there we've recovered finished. I'm really happy with that. Now all we need to do is get it sealed up properly with a MIG and chuck it on the car.
Okay, I now have both sides on. And those seriously are Heinz Beans containers. Obviously, that's not a long-term solution. That's just to get us up the road to the exhaust shop a few minutes away. But I am genuinely amazed at how well that holds it together. Solid. Now what I'm doing here is removing the exhaust hanger mount. Basically I need to weld the hanger onto the pipe and I want it in the position that it's in. I can't sneak the hanger out of the uh, rubber mount because the exhaust can't pivot far enough away, which is actually good because it means our attachment's strong. I don't want to detach the bean container just because I feel like the more times I do that, the less strong it's going to be. So I'm going to remove the bolts that hold this in, bring the whole unit down, tack weld it, screw it back up, and that should be this side done. Obviously, everything falls apart. Yep. probably looking at this wondering why the exhaust is so out of alignment and the reason is I ended up putting quad tips on the car and I wanted it as close to that inner edge as possible so that I only had to cut out one side of the valence. It's been three weeks with the exhaust. I'm pretty happy. It's not perfect, but I'm just gonna go for a drive, show you how it is now. It hasn't got rid of 100% of every bit of drone exactly where I want it. Was never expecting it to do that. Like, this is the real world. It has removed about 90%. Um, before this, my mirror was vibrating, my touchscreen was vibrating, there was rattles in the car. Um, you know, it was an absolute mess. Pulling out in front of me, really. Later, fair enough. I am still getting another resonator put back in and the reason for that is across the whole rev range the car is still too loud and fair enough like we've removed three mufflers so I'm not I was never expecting to be quiet. Rear resonator from a Golf R Mark 7 but it just happens to fit in terms of where the hanger is, entry and exit, pipe, pipe diameter and drive shaft cutout. Found it totally by fluke at the muffler shop Tony who works there at Quick Fit said 20 bucks. I said absolutely yes please. Um, because stupid decision I did throw out the factory mufflers and resonators when I cut them off. But we've gotten very lucky with this Golf R resonator. Right now it's just a little bit too obnoxious. <laughs> very 350Z sounding exhaust, which I don't really want. to adjust the length of the J-pipes because it wasn't really cancelling out exactly where I wanted. 
made two mistakes. Number one, completely underestimated how cold the J-pipe is even when the car is running. It's not 150 degrees at all, it's more like 40. And the second mistake I made was I chose to cancel the drone at what RPM I'm at on the freeway rather than where the drone is worst. So the drone's actually worse at about 2200. So I should have calculated it for that RPM instead, but live and learn. So because the J-pipe is a lot colder than I expected, I don't actually know the speed of sound. So we're going to make that the unknown variable, go back to our original equation, and we can figure out what it is based on how the car's performing. With the setup, it was actually cancelling around 1800, so I had to make a few changes. So what we're going to do is go back to the equation, we're going to set our hertz as 90 instead of 100, because it's cancelling at 1800 instead of 2000, so it's a bit lower. And we've got an unknown variable of speed of sound. First we're going to divide that 0.25 across, and that gives us 4.124 equals true speed of sound over 90. Move the 90 across, that gives us 371.16 meters per second rather than 412.3. Now at that speed, the temperature is 69.83 degrees. And I know I said the end of the J-pipe is 40, and that's because that's the average temperature inside the J-pipe. At the start, it's closer to 150, at the end it's 40-ish. I don't know how it works. That's the average temperature, 70 odd. Now we don't need that temperature to redo the calculation, but it's just good to know. We redo the calculation with the speed of sound that we've just discovered. A new required J-pipe length is 0.25 times 371.16 over 110. That's our new sound frequency. We've gone from 100 to 110. And that gives me a new required J-pipe length of 0.8435 meters or 843.5 millimeters. So it's a substantial difference. Then all we do is just subtract that from our original J-pipe length and that means we have to remove 186.5 millimeters in order to get that sound cancellation perfect. Let's go do that. Some people in the comments are probably going to have a crack about me using epoxy 
uh, to seal it up. Two reasons why it's okay to do that. Number one, the J pipes don't get hotter than about 40 degrees, so it's really not an issue at all. Um, I've used high temperature epoxy because it's in a heated area, um, but seriously, it's rated to like 400 Celsius. The exhaust gets to 150, the J pipes are 40, it's not gonna be a problem. Number two is the pressure in the J pipes is quite low. Um, like you could pretty much seal it with a piece of paper and it wouldn't break the piece of paper. It's a very passive system. That's the way it works. Uh, but it means it's not gonna blow the cap off and break the glue. Um, you just get a good seal, generous with the epoxy, generous with, you know, I was using JB Weld, but whatever you're using, generous with it. You just wanna make it airtight. That's the main thing. It will hold, no issues. If anything changes, if it does fail or something, I, I'll be honest, I will make a video on it or I'll, I'll say something about it, but I don't think it will. Um, so touch wood. Um, how does the stainless steel disc sound? Good, it's not tinny, it is quite thin material. I did wonder if it was gonna sound a bit tinny, a bit cheap, but it doesn't, it sounds fine. If you wanna hear how this car does sound, uh, I've got a second video up, just click up there. I'm gonna include that as a separate video though, because most of the people watching that video are gonna be looking up the SAT VR6 exhaust and not J-pipe, blah, blah, blah. So I'm just gonna make that its own short video for everyone. In terms of added weight, I'd be surprised if the J-Pipes add more than two kilos to the car. Building a trap weapon, that might worry you. This car weighs nearly 1.8 tonne, so two kilos doesn't bother me. And to be fair, if you're building a trap weapon, you probably don't think that fuss about drone anyway. Uh, so for any street setup, it's not gonna affect you. Performance-wise, I haven't really noticed any difference at all. Hasn't seemed to affect the car at all. Fuel economy, not affected at all. Um, still getting what I was always getting. Uh, so more of the story is super worth it um, Really not that expensive of a setup. I think it was 400 and a bit I've spent a bit more than that because I had to mess around and try a few different things and make multiple trips to the shop but um, if you learn from my mistakes and do it all in one hit or as you know as much as you can that will bring the cost down I, I personally can't think of how this car could sound better right now um, I don't really want it louder it doesn't drone, the tone's nice, the DSG changes sound really good. Um, so for 400, 500 bucks, I can't justify buying, you know, a $1,000, $2,000 cat back or something. This honestly sounds good. I was originally gonna go down the route of a high flow muffler setup, and every shop I talked to said, oh, we can't guarantee it'll get rid of drone, uh, we don't know how it'll sound, blah, blah, blah. And for over a grand, I get why they can't guarantee it. I, like, I understand the science behind that, but it wasn't enough for me to spend that money. Um, so I thought, you know what, I'm gonna just design this myself, calculate it properly, and it's worked. Um, and I'm really happy with it. If you're thinking about it, you want a nice, actually proper exhaust for your car for not several thousand dollars, definitely do J-pipes. If you're wondering what this is on my head, this is our new bucket hat from our startup Briskware. If you wanna pick one up, uh, I've got the site down below, briskware.com. They're really nice, it's quality material. Royal logo with the trim, um, I'm enjoying it. I'm not even really a bucket hat person, but I'm liking this one. So um, if you want to pick one up, link is below. So I think that just about wraps up the video. Um, I hope it's been useful and informative. Uh, I hope you're ready to get tools out and do some welding. Um, I enjoyed it, it's really rewarding, and it's ended up with a great finished product, so I'd highly recommend it. So thanks for watching guys, subscribe if you haven't, don't if you don't want to, and uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one guys, cheers.